to bring kids closer to you, Father, at an early age, Father. You said train up a child in the way that they should go so when they're older, they won't depart from you, Father. And that's just what this ministry is designed to do, Father. We ask that you recover the teachers, Father, the administrators, Father, the, the arts and crafts team, the nursery team, Father. We ask that you continue to bless them and keep them in their families, Father. We ask that you cover the parents and, these ch and the parents and children, Father, while they um dealing um, with COVID-19 in school, Father, and being online and being in the house, Father. And just, we just ask that you continue to be with those families, Father, whatever they may be facing at this moment. We ask, Father, that you will bless this time, bless this world, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. So before we get into the lesson, I want y'all to do something with me. All right? We're going to do this a couple of times, man. Yeah. And I would just want y'all to pick up on it. Um, so, I just want y'all to sing with me. It's just a simple song. We're going to say just a couple of lines from it. And we're going to be done. Because we got to learn to give God some praise when we come to him. So, we're just going to simply say, Melodies from heaven Rain down on me Rain down on me Right, so we're going to say that again. Melodies from heaven rain down on me, rain down on me. Take me, take me in your arms and hold me close. Rain down on me, rain down on me. Hey, fill me with the precious Holy Ghost. Rain down on me, rain down on me. Yeah, there we go. Amen, amen, amen. Give me all the hand clap of praise, hand clap of praise, hand clap of praise, man. That's what we need to do, guys, man. You ought to just praise God sometimes. Just, just, just praise Him. All right, all right. So we gon' we gonna dive into the word. We got Matthew chapter one, verses eighteen to twenty-five, and you have Luke. Chapter 1, 26 through 33, all right? So I'm going to read the text, and we're going to answer some questions, man, and we're and we going to get right into it, all right? It says, Mary was very excited because she soon would be getting married. The marriage was planned, and she looked forward to living with Joseph. Suddenly, God sent an angel to visit Mary. The angel said, God has something planned, something special planned for you. The angel's news upset Mary. She wondered what God's special plan was for her. Then the angel said, do not be afraid, Mary. God is very happy with you. By God's power, you will give birth to a son. You must name him Jesus. He will be God's son. He will grow up to be great. Mary asked how all of this could happen. The angel explained how God will work a miracle through her. The angel reminded Mary that nothing is impossible with God. Mary accepted what the angel said. She wasn't afraid anymore. She said, I am the Lord's servant. She was ready to do whatever God wanted her to do. She would be ready for Jesus' birth. Mary got ready for Jesus' birth by accepting God's instructions and plan for her. When Joseph learned that Mary was going to have a baby, he was not happy. Joseph planned to stop the wedding, but he wanted to do this in a way that would not upset Mary. One night while Joseph was sleeping, God sent an angel to Joseph. The angel said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary home to be your wife. The baby inside her is from God. She is going to have a son. You must give him the name Jesus. That is because he will save God's people. God's people from their sins. 
When Joseph woke up, he believed the angel and accepted the angel's words. He would be ready for Jesus' birth. Joseph changed his plans and went to Mary and took her home to be his wife. He knew Mary's baby would be a very special child. He would be God's son. And Joseph would name him Jesus. Mary and Joseph were excited about the angel's news that Jesus, God's son, would be born. God helped them be ready for Jesus' birth. Jesus is coming. All right, so... Like, how do, like, I'm going to ask you, like, how do you guys know that Christmas is coming? You start to get, like, you start to see the presents around the house, right? You start to see stockings start to be hung. Uh, you might have Christmas tree, Christmas lights. You have all kind of decorations around, you know. You start to see different commercials on TV. And you know what else? Y'all start asking for stuff. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know Christmas time coming. Like, y'all might not know any other day in the year, but you know Christmas. Because you start asking for stuff. you like, hey, I want a unicorn. I want a pony. You know, um, can I have, you know, a wolf dog? Can I have a Nintendo DS, a Switch? I need new games from a PlayStation. Can I get some V-Bucks? You know, can I uh, get Call of Duty? I need, I want some new shoes. You just start asking for stuff. You know, that that's what you do. You know what I'm saying? I need, I need some Barbies. You know, you, hey, I need some new tumbling gear. You know, can I get a, a ballerina outfit? You just start naming stuff. Yeah, you know, as parents, you know what we do? We look at you. We laugh. You know, we might say something like, uh, when you're going to get a job, you know, different stuff like that. You know, whatever your parent might tell you. But you guys start asking for stuff like that. So that's how you know, like, Christmas is coming. But, or you might hear the, hear the saying, Jesus is the reason for the season. You know, so so you got Christmas is coming. So at, when, we, when we know Christmas is coming, it's all about Jesus' birth. And this is the beginning right here, um, Mary being pregnant. All right, so the angel comes and lets her know. And what happens? You know what I'm saying? What it says, it says, what did the angel, matter of fact, I got a question up here. What did the angel tell Mary and Joseph? Which I just answered for you. Jesus is coming. All right. So it says, how did Mary show that she was ready for Jesus? What did she say? According to the text, it says that she said, I am the Lord's servant. Which means that if she says she's the Lord's servant, she was ready to do whatever God had told her to do. She was positioning herself to accept what God wanted her to do and to go out and execute it with joy and with happiness. Now, I remember if, at first it said the angel's news upset Mary. You know what I'm saying? She's like, hold up. Like, hey, what you mean? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be pregnant. Like, oh, no, hold on. She got something special planned for me. Like, oh, no, nah, uh, uh, I ain't with that. You know, I could probably see Mary right now. We're like, you know what I'm saying? That's probably what she was doing at that moment. But as the angel explained to her what was going to happen and how good it would be, her attitude changed. She got, she got happy. She said, I am the Lord's servant. When you say that you are the Lord's servant, that means when the Lord tells you something, you go out and you do it. As, as, as he said, okay? Um... So, so, uh, what was another thing, uh, which I ain't get a chance to write? It says, uh, what did Joseph do to show that he was ready for Jesus to come? It says that he changed his plans because remember, he was finna call off the wedding, he was finna call off the wedding because he's like, man, this woman pregnant, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not the daddy, is what he said, I'm not, I'm not the father. So, so now, like. <laughs> So now the angel got to come tell him and prep him and get him ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I know that this is, because at this point, in their, t in their age, in their time frame, rather, this was frowned upon, having a baby before you're married. Let's say it was, it was frowned upon. So Joseph was like, hey, I'm about to call off the wedding. But what did, what did the angel say to Joseph? Don't be afraid to take Mary home to be your wife. The baby inside of her is from God. So that's what Joseph did. He changed it. He, he, he stuck to the wedding and took her home because that's what the angel told him to do. 
So again, so there's there's that is Joseph recognizing that he is God's servant too. So he did what God what the angel said. He took her home. But and, and the key to this guys is follow the instructions that God is giving you, whether where he's sending them from. And it doesn't matter who he's sending them from, as long as you know that it's coming from the Lord Himself. So you got an angel coming to both of them to give them both instructions the same instructions it ain't it ain't get different instructions i mean well let me, let me rephrase that they got they were told about the same the same incident the same baby you know what i'm saying they were gonna get it the same way you know so they had different things that they had to do but it was still aligned the same way you know like kind of like if we tell you your family that your, your family tells you to do your chores one do this, one do that. It's still chores. It's lined up the same way because the house will still be clean, all right? So, like, you got Mary and Joseph having a baby. They have different instructions. Joseph is to take her home to be his wife. And Mary is to accept the knowing that, that she's God's servant. And that's what he's about to bless her with, to carry a baby, all right? So, you have instructions from God, and they both follow the instructions from God that Jesus is coming. All right. So like, and they told him that his name would be Jesus. Like, like, hold on, man. Like when you get rid, like when your parents, and you, 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 were, your mom was pregnant with you. Like, they was like, oh, we gotta think of a name. Like, yo, like, like for me, like I'm gonna be honest with you. Like y'all classmate Kanye. I wanted his name to be Mason, you know. That's what I wanted his name to be, cause it's a strong name. Like it's Mason, it's a strong name, you know. You know what I'm saying? That's like, you know what I'm saying? It's just strong. Like I want his name to be Mason. Like, and, and Miss Jocelyn, she was like, uh, we not naming my baby no Mason, you know. So like, we sitting up and we thinking about all these different names. Like, uh, matter of fact, he was almost named McConaughey too. You know, he was almost named McConaughey. Um, but like we just kept coming up with different names and coming up with different names to finally like we settled on Kanye and we both agreed on Kanye. Um, but that's that's how the process goes. So though like Mary and Joseph didn't even have to sit down and think of no name. Like, <laughs> hey, look, the angel say, hey, look, you gonna have a baby, Mary, Joseph, y'all are to name him Jesus. Now, I imagine that they was like, well, why we got to name him Jesus? Why can't he be named Joseph Jr.? Why can't he be named Daniel? Why can't he be named Bryce? You know, so what did, I, what did the angel say? It said, you must give him, you must, which means it's mandatory. You must give him the name Jesus. Why? That is because he will save God's people from their sins. Save. So, so when you hear the name Jesus, it means Savior. You know what I'm saying? He come to save the God's people from their sin, from their faults, from their wrongdoings. All right. So that is why he that God he's given the name Jesus because he's coming to save God's people. Who are God's people? You and me, your parents and you. Like we are God's people. We are His children. We are His. We are his uh, vessels, all right? So that's what we. That's why he got the name Jesus, because he come to save. Come to save each and every last one of us from our sins, from our wrongdoings. That is why he got the name Jesus. Man, that is why he got the name Jesus. Which is such a wonderful name, a beautiful name. Also, you might, you might hear people call him Emmanuel, which means God be with us. You know what I'm saying? I throw the little nugget in there for you. You might hear Emmanuel, God be with us. Because God is with us each and every day. You know, he's an omnipresent, means, which means he's everywhere. So, like, I'm in this room by myself and this board, but he's in here. Like, his presence is still in here. In your home, he's there as well. He's omnipresent. So, right now, while you're listening to me, he, he's still in your house. Like, he can hear your conversation in your house and the conversation over at your ain't house. Like, that's how, how good God is, all right? So, uh, like, that's that's the beauty of Jesus coming, guys. Like, that's what the angel did. He told, told Mary and Joseph that he was coming, and Mary and Joseph followed the instructions of the angels. 
that that was sent to them and giving them the instructions. Um, and matter of fact, guys, I want you to think about something. Like while, while I'm thinking about it, like what if an angel came to visit you? Like how would you react? You know, like like would you be happy? Would you be excited? Would you be frightened? You know, scared? Um, Cause like, why do you think like 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 Mary Mary had got got surprised? You know, maybe she ain't never seen an angel before. You know, like maybe it's something new. We don't even know how the angel looked. Like you know, so I imagine the angel was pleasant and kind. You know, but she ain't never seen an angel before. But how would you react when you see an angel, or if you saw an angel? Like, like, you probably be like Mary and Joseph. You kind of nervous, kind of scared, like you don't know what to do. Kind of stand back, you know what I'm saying? Kind of still. Um, and so, matter of fact, guys, with, with, with that being said, I'm laughing because, like, I remember when I was about maybe nine or ten, man, I seen a ghost and it scared me. Like, y'all, I'm not being funny and then, like, I really seen a, a, a ghost. Like I went to bed sleeping, like you kids might not know about bunk beds, but we had bunk beds, man. I'm sleeping at the top bunk and I felt something and I woke up and I'm sleeping on my side, on my, on my left side. I'm sleeping on my left side. I woke up, you know what I'm saying? And I rose up and I could see this, this silhouette of a, of a ghost standing in front of me. Well, not really in front of me. It's a nice little distance. And, and, and then all this ghost did was wave his finger like like I was being bad or something. I, I don't know. I probably did something wrong. I don't remember. But like, man, I just woke up and I just stared at it like I was stuck. I like, like, like if somebody scared you, you just freeze up. Like, that's what I did. I, I, I rose up and I froze. And I just, I just looked at him for about like five, ten seconds. And then I closed my eyes for a few seconds and then I did one of the, you know, like in the movies, you know, you kind of squinch your eye and kind of see if it's still it. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> so, man, like, it, 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 I wasn't really, I was I was scared. I can say I was kind of scared because I ain't never seen nothing like that before. Now, have I seen any more since? No, I have not. <laughs> um, but uh, thank God for that, too. Um, but that's just to give you guys an example, which is kind of crazy why God gives this story and for me to tell it. Uh, but guys, remember that, that Jesus is coming. Uh, he's coming back. He came in the form of a, of a child and then he grew up to be a man. And I believe that that is so that he can fully understand our lives and what we go through as human beings. That's why I believe he dwelt among us. So he can fully understand the trials and tribulations that we go through and understand our emotions to a whole nother level and be able to be very relatable. Um, it's kind of like when you guys grow up, uh, when you guys reach your parents' age, you know, your parents are going to be able to tell you things because your parents have already lived your age. And I believe that's what happened with Jesus. He lived out our, our lives going by him growing up. He lived out and face what, what we'll face as being Christians, being ridiculed, um, being misunderstood, um, you know. So, so guys, keep that, in, keep that in mind that Jesus dwelt in the flesh and he understands what you guys go through, whether, it, whether it's school or anything in your house, man. And, and just give it to him and, be, and, and allow God to show himself um, to you, you know. And that's, and that's the beauty. That's, that's, that's today's lesson, guys. And don't be afraid when an angel comes because an angel will come and just like that. He'll come or she'll come and they're meant to be a blessing to you. So don't be scared and don't be nervous. Just listen, follow the instructions and allow God to bless your lives. That's today's lesson, man. I'll see you guys next time.